Here's a steady rest. Uh, during the welding and fabricating stages, I have three of the supports for the wheels. You can see that the wheel can go inside or outside as it is now. If I move it, the wheel is inside, you lose a little bit of diameter, but it changes the support area or the location. Still works fine. So now I will uh, go on to the next step. I'm going to drill a pilot hole here and get a hole ready to mount the uh, roller blade wheel on here. And I switch over to a 5 16 bit because the bolt is 5 16. There's the finished hole, no big deal, simple. Now I'm going to put the bearings in the rollerblade wheels. And then it just goes on there. The nut down here is just a spacer to space it out from the shaft. And I got a nylon lock nut. There it is. Ready to go. So do them all the same and mount them on the steady rest. Well, here I'm going to weld the last little uh, support for the, the wheel arm. So here we go. Flip it over and put a little weld on the back side. And there it is. I'm going to drill holes in here so I can mount a 3 8 nut on here and put my little T-handle to tighten up to hold the wheels in place when you move them in and out to fit on uh, whatever you're turning. So here we go. A 7 16 bolt. It's a little bigger than 3 8 so I have some clearance with my 3 8 bolt. Take a little file and get rid of the burr. Maybe. Okay, now I take my little grinder and clean off the paint here so the welder will work good. What I do is I like to take and put a nut inside here, plus the one I'm gonna weld on so I can get it centered in the hole. That way I make sure that 
we've got clearance when I weld the nut on. Okay, here it is welded in. Now I'll take the, the keeper. There falls the nut that kept me in place. Now it's ready to hold the, the wheels in place. Now I can loosen it, move it to wherever I want, hold it in place. I'll do all four of them the same way. Works real nice. I'm going to take a, a little piece of this quarter inch square stock and I'm going to cut it so it fits in between the ways on both ends. So when you set it in there, it keeps everything centered and square and then I'll make the keeper for the bottom that holds it in place. So it's a little better. A lot of guys just take one piece and just lets it spin until it catches. Well, you know, I think it can still wiggle around and move and I, I want to try to keep it as centered and square on whatever I'm turning it at the time I'm turning it. So I'll get this ready to go. You see I've got the two little bars welded on there. I'll clean these all up and when I paint it, sits in there just perfect, doesn't twist all around, holds it right in place. Now I'll make the bolts go through to hold it clamped to the ways and we'll be ready to paint. The clamp that goes on the bottom, the clamps the steady rest in between the ways to keep it in place while you're turning your, uh, your vase for a deep hollowing operation. It's in place, centered, and my holes will have clearance, I'll weld them on. Now we've got the the clamper base down in the bottom. I'm missing a bolt here. We're going to go get some with a hex head so we can use an Allen wrench to tighten them up. It should be a lot easier than this, but give us a couple of turns and it's solid. We'll put our, our wheels in. We can put them in inside or to the out. It really won't matter. It'll still do the job. When we get them all four in there, we can move them in and out until we get the size we want. So, there's the basic uh, finish steady rest. I'll finish the other two, put in my T-handles, and we're done.